Today we're going to be having a look at the new release, Yamato USA Fantasy Figure Gallery DC Comics Collection Wonder Woman by Louis Royo. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure to figure out how tall this PVC statue stands. And the answer to that is about 11 and a half inches in height. When you get the statue opened up and out of the box, one thing you'll probably treat it to immediately is a little bit of assembly. And I'll show you how that all comes together in a second. But you may also find the following items inside the box. One of which being a fantasy figure gallery from Yamato USA featuring a drawing depiction of the statue. I have actually looked at this statue before, two times before, but not quite specifically this one. What's he talking about? I'll mention that in a second. But those other two statues also came with variations of this drawing that depicts how the Wonder Woman uh, character was gonna be portrayed here in statue form. So you do get this, and you also get yourself a little placard which does feel like it is metal. On the front it says Fantasy Figure Gallery DC Comics Collection Wonder Woman by Louis Royo. Uh, it doesn't actually have anything on it that could attach to the base, nor does it really have a section on the base where I thought this could attach to. I thought, okay, maybe if I could put it right there, but there doesn't seem to be as flat of a surface on the base in which I could put the placard on there. And even if I did find a place, the question would then be, how do I attach it to it? Um, if there was just like a little slot right there on the side, that's about the closest one I can think of. Um, like this doesn't really go anywhere necessarily. But it's nice, I suppose, if you had it this on display, for example, you could kind of rest the placard onto the front, or at the very least, you could have it to the very side of the statue. Like I had said though, I had looked at this statue before, but not really quite this one specifically, the same sort of design, but a little slightly different. We'll bring in the statue in question. And there was actually two releases. I did do reviews on both of them. There was the regular release, which was slightly darker in skin tone. The one woman was slightly darker in skin tone. And then there was this one here, which I believe was an Entertainment Earth exclusive, which gave us slightly different, lighter shade of skin tone, but it also gave us a variation to her costume. Um, I selected this one as a comparison to this one here because it is the closest in proximity. It's same similar pose as really the other one that I didn't have on display here. But the other one had her holding her lasso in hand. This one here is the most accurate because she's both holding the shield in hand and her sword in the other. So I wanted to display them side by side so you can see the differences between the two. Other than the obvious of the one statue on this side being considerably bigger than the other, you'll notice also that there's a good difference in face sculpt as well. And it wasn't until I brought the one to the left in on camera that I realized it was as drastic as what it was. The one on the left is a much more realistic portrayal of Wonder Woman. The one on the right and the newer release from Yamato what is slightly more animated or slightly a little bit more cartoon in interpretation. The posing is roughly the same, but you see that the one on the right side is a little bit more stylized in its, well, its overall sculpt. To note really as well, the one on the left here is a little bit more expensive and harder to come by. This one is a much more affordable means, and even by saying affordable means, this particular one I picked up at my comic book store, I think it was about $169. So it doesn't come cheap, unfortunately. It's a nice looking Wonder Woman, but for those who were unable to get maybe this one or the darker skin toned version of Wonder Woman, this is a nice alternative. Though as you did see there, there were drastic differences between the face sculpts. The rest of the bodies and the bases themselves, actually the bases are relatively similar to one another. This one has a couple more components to it. In fact, let's get a closer look. 
Yes, yeah, so the bases are very similar to one another. This one's slightly a little bit more brown in, in the gray color scheme. This one's a little bit much broader, a little longer, and it has more pieces, a little more components to it. The figures attach them in a similar enough nature. This Wonder Woman here, it actually just has one single peg that attaches to the base here. And in the process of doing so, be careful I don't accidentally clip the sword on this particular statue. Wiggle the foot back into place. This one here is attaching actually via two pegs. And let me just say, getting it first in place and now trying to remove it, it's much more trickier. So you may not want to be doing that very often. They share similar skin tones, a rather bleached skin tone. It doesn't work so much as badly here on Wonder Woman, the one on the left. This one I do find comes across as if they didn't go back and they didn't airbrush it a second go around. There are indications here in the torso that, well, there's a slightly darker skin, like flesh tone that looks like it's been airbrushed, but it does come across a little on the bleach side, bleached side, especially when you start looking at the leg area here, which is extremely pale. Again, we'll have a closer look at this particular statue in a second. I just want to do some more comparisons between the larger scale and the smaller scale. Now, this one here also feels like it could be a resin sort of material. This one here obviously is a PVC plastic, so it keeps the cost much more affordable if you want to specifically get this one instead. So let's start from the beginning. This is how all the components come out of the box and this is exactly what you're gonna be treated to when you get this Wonder Woman statue for yourself. You'll get the base, which we've already done comparisons with the larger scaled Wonder Woman, a peg there, peg hole, and two peg holes here for her feet. As you can see, it's just a hollow, well, slightly, that's not fair, the little bit of hollowness on the underside of the base, but still a rather dense amount of PVC plastic on the top there. A nice mix between lighter shades of gray and a darker shade of gray it almost gives it the indication that it looks almost like wood rather than stone perhaps of course the gray would be the giveaway that it's more likely a stone than anything else but it makes for a nice platform for the statue to stand on top of then you can go ahead and take the figure and there's two pegs here and one single peg there to simply be a case of lining up the foot to the front and then adjust the back foot until you got everything in place. I'm kind of working in reverse here because we had already done the comparisons. Then I had to take the figure off the base. I do want to say though, I wouldn't advise doing that very often. It does, it's a really hard fixed, you know, uh, in place. And to try to pry that box back off, I wouldn't want to be jeopardizing breaking any bit of the pegs off. Next, let's have a look at her lasso of truth, which, as you can see, has been sectioned. There's a little divide in the middle there and pegs on either side. Take the figure, and there's a loop right there. You're going to spread the lasso out. You're going to fit it through the hole, and it doesn't really so much attach to itself rather than it just attaches into the holes provided on the sides of her little uh, holster there. The sword is the easier of the two to put in place, so why don't we focus our efforts here on the shield. The shield, just before we attach it to Wonder Woman's arm, is a glorious painted piece. Varying degrees of browns and gold colors there. And as you saw with the comparison, the shield is different than the one that we had already looked at. A nice raised elevation there in the gold, as well as the eagle uh, crest there. And some nice decorative around the outer area there as well. It's a nice looking shield. Uh, to attach it to Wonder Woman's arm, what you need to do is you need to take her hand out. Don't worry, it's intended to be coming out. And flip the shield around. There's one of these that detach. I suppose maybe both of them detach, but this one does seem like it's a little bit permanently in place. But this one does detach, it's supposed to detach. You're gonna go ahead and take the hand I really do not like doing this. Take the hand, take the peg, and there's the peg, there's the peg hole. Just kind of wedge that peg into the hand, like that. Then go ahead and take the other peg, and this is the trickier of the two. You have to do the same thing. Fit the peg into place, like that. 
and kind of wedge it into that hole. I have noticed though, try as I might to get that peg completely in, it does, doesn't does seem to go completely in to the point where I can line the little pegs back into the shield. So what I, what I do usually do is I just kind of keep it like that. There is a gap, but it's still enough to hold everything in place. Take Wonder Woman's arm and feed the arm through the loop. And it's easier if you hold the arm here. Just take the peg and fit it back into the slot. Helps if you actually do it the right way as well. Fit it back into the slot and just pop it back into place like that. And now you have her holding the shield. Like I said, the sword is the easiest of the two to put in. Just take the end of the hilt off. Spin the figure around or just to the point where you can slide it through. And take the other, that end piece and just line, and just fit it back over top. Like that, snap it in place. The, uh, the handle of the sword does sit, not loose, but it doesn't lock into place. So it does have a little bit extra wiggle room. So I just kind of bring the hand closer to the end portion, closer to the blade. And once that's done, you've got yourself a completed Wonder Woman statue, which for the most part is a really nice representation of the same similar type of statue that we had looked at two times previous. By the way, if you guys would like to go back and have a look at those two videos in their entirety, or let me know down below in the comments section if you guys would like to see throwbacks on those two particular statues. Maybe I'll do that one day. But the statue is a little bit, like I said, smaller, you saw in the comparison. And the coloring, as well as the face sculpt, are drastically different as well. Yes, the face sculpt here on Wonder Woman is really pretty. Very large eyes, uh, very large mouth as well. In fact, she almost comes across slightly elf-like or slightly pixie-like. She's definitely a little bit more anime, I want to say, than the other two Wonder Woman that uh, Yamato has released. But under the banner of their fantasy figure gallery, they really do some great uh, female statues. And Wonder Woman here is no different. I may say that perhaps the crown, by the placement of where it is, makes her forehead seem a little longer than what it necessarily is or what necessarily it should have been. You see that they've gone in and they've just given it slightly darker paint, the recessed areas around the star and the little slots on the side there. A nice metallic gold they've made use of here, which seems to be a very similar gold to the one that's in the shield. Maybe slightly darker, just because you got the darker paint in there. If I could have any complaint at all, it would be just the skin tone. It's way too pale, especially the legs. The torso, you could excuse the fact that they've gone in and clearly they've made efforts to airbrush a darker tone of skin, of flesh tone around the areas of the armpits, the shoulders, the shoulder blades around the neck area and around the bust area. They've added some additional shading. Here though, down below, it almost doesn't even seem intentional. It seems like they've just gone and forgotten to add some additional shading. She gets a little bit around here, but it's so vacant when it comes around to the leg area. This rather pale complexion, I have to admit, does detract a little bit from the statue. I do wish that her face was a little bit on a warmer tone, as well as, well as the torso, but it's not an absolute deal breaker. Had the neglect down here carried its way up to the torso and carried its way into the face, I do think then the statue may have been a pass. As good as the head sculpt may have been, if the statue forfeits it because of a poor paint execution, I think I would have passed on it altogether. So luckily, there's a little, there's enough of a save happening here. It could have granted been a little bit greater than what we got here. It definitely could have added some more warmer tones to it. Didn't have to be as pale as it needed to be, but at, at the very least, it's it's a far cry from the very paleness that's in her lower legs. All right, we've talked enough about her skin tone. Let's have a look at the rest of the statue. Going to her hair. It's the same sort of sculpting as what we got with the other two Yamato Wonder Woman, a very ferocious ferocity in her hair sculpt here. Doesn't have really much in the way of coloring. It seems to favor more so just of a dark, almost a dark gray up at the top and gets progressively darker as it gets to the individual strands. 
but I like that they kept the strands in groupings rather than having it one consistent hair sculpt. Again, it adds to just some level of veracity, I think, to it, and I really do like that. Uh, when we did have a look at her uh, her outfit, it is very much, I would say, rooted by the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman design. Um, both the torso, the upper bodice area, as well as the lower skirt, clearly looks like something we would have saw from the DC Universe Wonder Woman design. Even like the individual lining, the panel lining, making up her armored uh, bodice, like I said here, and the skirt especially looks definitely like something you would see from the movie. The skirt is a loose piece, and it uh, does sit rather on a loose side, but I mean, luckily it's not going to be moving around too much on you if you're going to have the figure affixed, the statue affixed, just in a, uh, a cabinet somewhere. Moving down her legs, again, very, very similar to the DC, I guess, movie Wonder Woman, except for the separation in the legs where the the, uh, the legs or boots for that matter were made up of individual components. Here instead, you just get one consistent boot with some nice metallic gold making its way on the front kneecap area all the way down and to the front of her boot. Some rather nice distressing that they've added to the gauntlet section here of Wonder Woman. We spin it around without clipping the sword. You can see how it's been bolted and riveted on the inside. It's a nice wet wash there of a darker gray that's been added. In fact, both the bodice, the bust top area of her armor, as well as the lower skirt have been both treated some additional wash. As pale as really the rest of the statue sits, it's nice that at least, at the very least, that they went in and they added a couple of extra layers of color to the, at the very least, the costume section of the figure. As we wrap up this review, one other thing I just want to mention, I don't know why I felt so compelled to mention this, but she does seem to have rather large ears. I know, I know, you're nitpicking. If not for the hair cascading over top of the ears, I just want to bring your attention. Yes, the ears are a little, just a little on the large side. I guess really the look that they were going with is the fact that they wanted large lobes sticking out from underneath the hair. But again, if you look very closely at it, she does have rather large ears. So I suppose the next question you're going to ask me then is, if you've already picked up the Yamato USA Fantasy Figure Gallery Wonder Woman statues, is it worth picking this one up? Well, the long-winded answer to that question would be yes. Even though I technically have already picked up two Wonder Woman from Yamato USA that are very similar to one another, even in the reviews of those, there are enough differences between them, both skin tones, costumes, and the way that they're holding their accessories, to make them unique from one another. Comparing those two, even though I only compared one figure to this one, there's enough differences between the previously enter released Entertainment Earth exclusive and this one here. This one's a little bit smaller, it's made up of a different material, so that's one thing. And of course, one can't help but overlook the fact that this one has now the updated Gal Gadot Wonder Woman design. So there's merits for picking this particular statue up, even if you've already picked up the other two before. Also, with this one too, as I mentioned in the course of this review, this one does feel like it's a little bit more rooted in comics. Uh, the look on the Wonder Woman's face, the face sculpt, comes across a little bit more like a pixie or an anime design of Wonder Woman. It definitely feels something like more what you would see in the comics, whereas the other two Wonder Woman statue releases before definitely had more realistic tones to them. The faces look a little bit more realistic by comparison to this one here. This one's a little bit smaller and of a uh, different material. The other ones felt more like a resin. This one feels a little bit more like a PVC plastic. It doesn't translate, unfortunately, to a more inexpensive figure, Granted, getting the other two would be harder to come by, you may have to find them in aftermarket and pay scalped prices. This Wonder Woman defaulted, if you get her right now, which she's currently available in comic book stores, you're going to be looking to spend about $160 to about $170 for this statue. It's a little on the steep side, but Yamato releases don't tend to be mass distributed releases either. They don't get a lot of distribution. And I think even the comic book store that I picked this one up, they only had two. And I picked up one. 
and I'm sure somebody will pick up the other. So it is a little of a steeper price if you want to add this one to your collection, but I do think it's worth it. It's a nice looking piece. It does have all the elements to it that I really do like. And I love the fact that in this instance, we've got ourselves the updated Wonder Woman designs that we are now seeing in the Wonder Woman film as well as all of her appearances in Batman v Superman and Justice League. So a long-winded answer to your very short question. I guess I do think that this is a figure that is worth picking up, even if you already have the other two in your collection. Today, we were having a look at the Yamato USA Fantasy Figure Gallery. This was the uh, DC Comics collection Wonder Woman by Louis Royo. I think Louis might have also done, I'm certain he had also done the other two Wonder Woman that we've already looked at on this channel. Oh, 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 speaking of other videos on this channel, if you want to go back and have a look at those reviews of the Wonder Woman that I've already done reviews of, you'll be able to find them under the Yamato playlist, which I'll also put this statue in if you guys want to watch all of those. Uh, certainly more videos will be coming your way. And also, if you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so as many more statue reviews and other collectible reviews will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.